Our Heavenly Father, we are truly thankful for the privilege of using the facilities of this radio station to present another Way of Truth broadcast. And we're trusting that the Holy Spirit will enable us to produce a broadcast that will be a blessing to precious souls. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Ralph Craig is opening our musical part of the broadcast singing for us, Unworthy. Unworthy am I of the grace that He gave. Unworthy to hold to His hand. Amazed that a king would reach down to us. This love I cannot Scriptures that salvation is not of works, lest any man should boast. It is the gift of God. Every one of us were unworthy, but God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. Thank God for such wonderful love. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. 
the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me. I won't turn back, I won't turn back. I'm so glad. Our subject for today's broadcast, Not of the World. We find these words in the beautiful prayer that Jesus prayed to his heavenly Father as recorded in John 17 and verse 16. And Jesus was speaking of his disciples, and he said, They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Jesus was holding a very high standard for the disciples when he said they were not of the world, even as he was not of the world. And I would say that same standard is held for the disciples of Christ today. Jesus did not hold a higher standard for the disciples that were there with him than what he holds for all of us. Now, now, there are two moral worlds, the unrighteous world. All unrighteousness is sin. So we read in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 17. And then we have the righteous world. The righteous shall never be removed, according to Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 30. And we're also reading in Proverbs 14 and 34, that righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. So there are two moral worlds, the unrighteous world and the righteous world. There are These are moral opposites. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Or, in other words, an unbeliever? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So the unrighteous world and the righteous world are two opposites. 
and we cannot be in both at the same time. Now, Christians are not of the evil world. First of all, when we think about the world, we think about the spirit of the world, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So Paul wrote to the Ephesian church, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2. And we notice here that the Apostle Paul makes reference to the spirit world. And he was not talking about the Holy Spirit here. He was talking about that spirit that's out there in the unrighteous world. It is that spirit that causes people to live in disobedience to the commands of Almighty God. We read also in Paul's writings, this time to the church at Corinth, 1 Corinthians 2.12, We have received not the spirit of the world. No, so the Christian, the disciple of Christ, has a different spirit than the world has. And the Christian, in having a different spirit, is led by the Holy Spirit. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And so the Spirit of the Christian is one who lives in obedience to the world, and they are to the Word, and they are not of the world. We have received the Spirit which is of God. So Paul says in 1 Corinthians 2 and 12, the latter part of the verse, A meek and quiet spirit, Peter said, is in the sight of God of great prize. 1 Peter 3 and 4. And that's the kind of a spirit that the Christian has. He doesn't have a haughty spirit. He doesn't have a forward spirit. He doesn't have a rebellious spirit. He has a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Now, in the manner of life, we are living in a different world whenever we are in living in that righteous world, when we are being led by the Spirit and are living in the Spirit. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles, or in other words, the unsaved, when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excessive wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. So we read in First Peter chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. So the world, when we leave the world and we, keep, we are saved from the world, and we have the Spirit of Christ, and we're living after the Spirit and not after the flesh, the world thinks it's strange. And don't be surprised if they persecute you or mock you or make fun of you. As I have said before on this broadcast, the disciples were first called Christians at Antioch, not by other Christians or other disciples. They were called that by the worldly people who were making fun of them. But as far as I'm concerned, they were really paying them a compliment, for it simply meant that they were living as Christ lived, and they were endeavoring to please the Lord and not the sinful things of the world. If we live after the flesh, we are told by the apostle, we, if, if we live after the flesh, we shall die. But if through the Spirit we do mortify the deeds of the body, we shall live. So the way of rebellion, the way of the ungodly world, is death. Yes, it's death. But the righteous world, living after the things of the righteous world, means life 
and life eternal. In disposition of heart, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lust and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. So we read in Titus chapter 3 and verses 1, 2, and 3. And here we see the opposites of the two worlds. The whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And Paul speaks of that as being part of the life that some lived while they were living in the world and living after the spirit of the world. Notice these words from the Apostle Paul again. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. Now that's talking about living in the righteous world and being led by the right spirit. But now Paul goes on in this this passage of Scripture in Titus, but he speaks about the other world, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. So we see that these two worlds, the unrighteous world and the righteous world, are indeed opposites one of the other. Now, Paul tells us in, or John tells us in 1 John chapter 3, Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because He laid down His life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him?" And that's First John chapter 3, verses 15, 16, and 17. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Romans chapter 8 and verse 5. And here again, we have the unrighteous world and its spirit, and we have the righteous world with its spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, they obey the things of the Spirit. Now, in purpose, the two worlds are separate and distinct. In placing our values in things of the world and things of the spiritual world, they are different. The purpose of the world is to please and to serve self. The purpose of a Christian is to please and to serve God. The world's values and temporal possessions and pleasures is the spirit of the unrighteous world. But the Christian has different values and different aspirations. If you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And we are told by the Apostle Paul that we are to not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind, that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, the world's success means temporal gain honor, and various being preferred above others, and living after the flesh, and seeking after the things of the world. But to the Christian, 
Success means living a holy, righteous, and godly life and doing good, as I just read from the Apostle John when he said, If we see our brother have need, we should not shut up our bowels of compassion against him. So the treasures of this world are material, and they will fade away and be gone. But the treasures of the Christian are eternal. Yes, the, pri the pearl of great price. The parable that Jesus gave us of that, he said about one man, he found the pearl of great price, and he went and he sold all that he had that he might purchase that field that had the pearl of great price. And beloved, when Jesus spoke of the man selling all that he had, what he is telling us is that we must sell out to the world. We must forsake the world. We must, as the hymn writer said, Goodbye, old world, I am through. You cannot hold on to the world and love God and serve God and have the precious Holy Spirit abiding in you. John said, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. But the world passeth away with the affections and lusts thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And so to the worldly-minded person, gain of material things and honor and being preferred above others is their goal. But for the Christian, success means living for God and obtaining eternal life in the world to come. Now, those who are not of the world do not act, talk, nor dress like the world, nor seek to find pleasure in worldly things. No, they find their joy in serving the Lord. There is joy in the Lord. And I tell you, you cannot find that joy in any, where, in any other place but in the Lord. John said we are not to love the world, but we are to love the Father. And we are to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Now Jesus asked the question, What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Mark 8 Chapter 8, verses 36 and 37. I only know of one man that had the world to himself. And he didn't have it very long, for God saw that it wasn't good for him to be alone, and he made him a helpmeet. Yes, Adam did have the world by himself for a while, but a very limited while. And then God made him a helpmeet and gave him a wife. So, no one is going to gain the world, but Jesus asked the question, What would it profit you if you were able to gain the whole world? What would it profit you? Or, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? You know, a lot of people evidently have no comprehension or understanding as to the value of their soul, for they are selling it very, very cheap. Some of them sell it for a bottle of booze. Some of them sell it for a cigarette. Some of them sell it around the gambling table or whatever you might want to mention. They have very little value on their soul. But God places proper value on our soul. And we should learn from what God did how valuable a soul is. God valued a soul so much that He gave His only begotten Son for our souls. And that is a very high price to pay. But God saw the value of our soul. And if God values our soul that much, then we should value it enough to give our hearts and our lives to the Lord, love Him and serve Him and please Him. Now, every soul is eternity bound. Regardless of how you're living in this world, every soul is eternity bound. And 
If we want to gain the world that's eternal, we must give our hearts and our lives over to the Lord and live for Him. But if we continue to live in sin, Jesus said, Where I am, there you cannot come. No, you cannot live for the world and go to be where Jesus is. If you die in your sins, where I am, there you cannot come. Now, eternal life is the greatest gain that you could possibly ever accomplish in this world. And if there be those listening to our service today who do not know the Lord, could I urge you to seek the Lord and see that your eternity-bound soul is saved and that you will have eternal life. Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll bless these scriptures and thoughts to our precious congregation today. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It's been a privilege to share another Way of Truth broadcast with you, and we'd be thankful if you'd let us know that you appreciate it. Our mailing address, the Way of Truth broadcast, Post Office Box 88, Hagerstown, Maryland, 21741, USA. Our email address, truth at fred.net. And our webpage address, www.wayoftruth.org. You may join us in our services by going to our webpage, www.wayoftruth.org. Our Sunday morning service begins 20 minutes before 11. Our evening service begins at 6. And our Wednesday evening service begins at 7. And these services are broadcast live over the Internet. Our Internet address again, www.wayoftruth.org. And now, this is Alvin A. Craig. We thank you for the privilege of sharing today's broadcast with you. Thankful that you are part of our congregation. And we invite you to tune in next week when we come your way again, the Lord willing, with another Way of Truth broadcast.